Hello everyone and welcome to the third episode in this tutorial series where I go through the missions in the exploration mode of KSB2 in the recently dropped 4 Science update. We are in Kerbal Space Program 2 version 0.2.0 and in the last episode we looked at how to get into orbit. I built the rocket that put this orbiter into orbit about Kerbin and looked at how we get there. And if you need help with all of that, well, you can check out this video right here. But this episode, what we're going to be doing is taking this vessel and taking it into orbit about the moon. So we're gonna be looking at how do we get from low orbit about Kerbin to low orbit about the moon and get that Kerbal back. But before we do all of that, what we have to do is go over to Mission Control and take a look at that mission. So first of all, we have completed the Orbit Kerbin mission, so we're going to submit our report for that. And again, Carrie is going to give us a little bit of color that you are free to read through, but it is not really necessary. And that gets us 75 science, so thanks science and then as soon as we submit that mission more missions pop up for us and the one we're mostly interested in here is the moon or a bust and our objective is to establish an orbit around the moon with an apoapsis less than 2400 kilometers and a periapsis greater than 60 kilometers so a pretty wide range um, and for that we're going to get ourselves 150 science and again in order to Kind of accept the mission all we have to do is track the mission if you want you can read the mission brief but uh, there's no reason to but while we're here we should be taking a look at some secondary missions here we have the going green mission which is to attach the gscm01 science junior to a vessel and perform an environmental survey well happens to be that piece of science is already on our vessel so that's one what we can get for free and the next one here spacewalking eva while in kerbin orbit well we're in kerbin orbit right now 40 science let's grab that so again with these missions in kerbal space program 2 every single time you finish off a mission and if it's safe to do so pop back to mission control see what's come up for you there's often uh, freebies there for you to do so let's pop back we got to first go to the tracking station we got to look under Kerbin and there is our vessel there and we have to control it so we're back to here we can uh, take a look at our new so we do have the uh, spacewalking one so let's do an EVA boink and there we go that's all there is to that there's nothing for us to do here so we're just going to push B to board right back again and uh, there is no science to collect right now. We've already collected all of our science that we have available to us in low orbit about Kerbin. So why don't we start with uh, getting ourselves towards the moon? Now, one thing I'm going to work with is the assumption that you have watched the tutorial videos in the training center of this game. Uh, specifically, I'm looking at the orbital transfer videos so you understand how maneuver nodes work and all that kind of stuff. The game does teach that stuff to you. I'm not gonna go over that in detail. So if you find some of what I do confusing, check those videos out. They're actually quite good at teaching you the basic game mechanics. Why did I just pop here? I don't know. Okay, so let's get ourselves to the moon. So in order to do that, we need to press M to go into map view. Here's the moon here. We're going to right click on the moon and we're gonna set that as a target. Now, to get towards the moon, what you need to do is raise your orbit so that it intersects with the moon orbit. And to raise your orbit, you need to set up a maneuver node and we'll do that in just a little bit but the thing to realize is of course is that the moon is moving it's moving in this direction in a counterclockwise direction on your screen so if we aim straight at the moon by the time we get to the moon the moon's going to have moved on us and with a little bit of experience you'll find out that in the amount of time it takes you to get from low curve orbit out to the moon's orbit the moon will go about a sixth of the way along in its orbit so that gets you okay so i need to raise this part of my orbit around Kerbin so that means I need to put my maneuver or what they call a maneuver plan on the opposite side there we're going to click on it to expand it and to raise our orbit we pull in the prograde direction 
the little green icon and there it goes now in our trip planner we knows we knew that we found out that this should cost us about 860 meters per second so as you're pulling this out watch the number here I usually find it's around 855 but you know it can vary a little bit but oh, oh, oh we're starting to get ourselves a moon encounter around 850 let's see how this is going so let's actually we can middle click on the mouse button and actually drag our way over there let's kind of zoom in a little bit on what's going on here so this sphere around the moon is the moon's sphere of influence when we cross into this sphere we will no longer be under the gravi gravitational influence of Kerbin. We will instead be under the gravitational influence of the moon. That's how the game works out its trajectories. It just switches from one to the other. These concentric circles that you see is showing where we're coming in, where the circles are kind of going outwards like this. That's showing where we're entering the moon's sphere of influence. And this one where the circles are going in, that is showing where we're leaving the moon's sphere of influence. And over here where it says moon PE, that is our periapsis, or in other words, our closest approach to the moon. And if we right click, we can pin that. Now remember that our periapsis has to be over 60 kilometers. So I don't want to come in any closer than that. But what I'm going to start with is adjusting that by first adjusting the timing of the burn rather than getting into I could push more prograde but that costs me more fuel so let's see how close I can get this periapsis simply by adjusting the timing so I got a lot of stuff oh maybe if I move my mouse around a little bit um fortunately there's an icon right on top but if you go to the where the maneuver node is and once it highlights in light blue that means that you can click it and you can start to move it around. So I'm looking at my closest approach to the moon and I'm look, trying to get that number as low as I can. I saw around 9.15, there we go. So that's telling me I'm in pretty close to the right spot. I can now pull a little bit more on the prograde one. I wanna get this a little bit above 60. So a little closer, a little closer. Keep pulling like that now I'm at about 255 let's see if I can get it closer again just with timing because again adjusting the timing doesn't cost me fuel look at that I'm getting in oh oh I saw it under a hundred there 80 that's pretty close so let's uh got a lot of icons here all on top of each other <laughs> maybe if I come in and out of map view there we go that gets rid of a lot of those icons click back on the maneuver node right click on the moon's periapsis and again I'm gonna go oh what did I see yeah there we go 63 point something that is pretty good there so basically that's it I got this 857 meter per second burn coming up in just under 20 minutes it's gonna take me one minute and 11 seconds to perform the burn well let's do it so pressing M to come out of map view and there is our vessel there I always like to do a quick save by pressing F5 before I do any maneuvers and also when I do a bunch of time warping I like to push a quick save because for whatever reason that's where I often mess up I suspect a lot of people are kind of similar in that vein so all we got to do now is click on the green arrows here to warp to our maneuver and the sun's coming up all nice for us And we have a little button down here to lock onto the maneuver node. So that will get us pointing in the right direction, which again is pretty much prograde, but we're not quite at our burn yet. So that's why the maneuver icon is not quite on the prograde icon on the nav ball. But all we gotta do now is wait. We can do a little bit of time warping to speed this up a little bit, but we're getting a countdown to start our burn. Let's go back to normal speed and we're going to get the little green pips, little lights here to sort of get us, time us out. There we go. Two, one, go. And we push our throttle and we are off. Like I said, the burn's going to take a little over a minute. If you want to, you can do a little bit of time warping. I wouldn't recommend going more than about four times speed while time warping like this to speed things up if you so desire. Pause on that again a little bit and what I like to do is actually not try and cut this exactly when the burn says it's going I should cut I like to cut a 
couple of seconds early, so I'm just going to hit the X button when this gets around, I don't know, two seconds, and then I like to finish this off without using the maneuver node. So three and a two, and we're just going to press X, go back to map view. We're going to look at our moon's PE again, right here. Oh, except you can see our burn hasn't quite made it, so I'm just going to hold shift a little bit, not said, just a little bit of throttle. Get that intercept with the moon back. There it is. Press X again to cut my throttle. Right click to see that P and just do the rest of it by looking at the numbers and getting it what I want. So the last part of the burn, I always like to kind of fine tune it like this. There are 70 kilometers. That's pretty good. If you really want to fine tune it even more, you can right click on this engine and turn down the throttle limiter. That'll give you very fine throttle control. Just if you do do that, make sure to put it back up again. And if you overcook it, all you gotta do is flip your rocket around to the retrograde vector and uh, just come back a little bit. No, no problem there. Okay, so we are on our way to the moon. Oh, another thing I should be showing people as well is let's take a look. Let's actually focus on the moon this time and take a look at our trajectory here. Oh, let's get rid of the actual maneuver so we're coming in now i'm i'm pretty happy with this trajectory i'm coming in on a little bit of an angle uh, that's fine you might find that you are coming in on more of an angle than i am and you might not like that or you might be actually coming way above the moon or way below the moon and you might be wondering well how do i fix all that kind of stuff still down here still do it just with the prograde do that burn normally just like i just did but if you want to adjust this trajectory the place to do it is putting in a maneuver plan about halfway on your trip towards the moon. So somewhere around here, then we're going to click on the plan itself. And the way to move, let's move it so that that's not in the way, is to use these little purple, what they're called the normal directions, the uh, purple triangles going up and down or north and south, really. There is no up and down so much in space. And you can see, for instance, I can pull this northwards as much as I want, or if I like, I can pull it southwards as much as I want. And doing a burn at this midway point is not that expensive. You can see here I'm only doing 22 meters per second. You will find that you're not only pulling it up and down, but you're also affecting your PE. Notice that my periapsis, my closest approach, has moved away from the moon. If you want to adjust that, do that with the prograde and the retrograde vectors. We can pull that, use the prograde to kind of pull it in a little bit more or retrograde to pull it out a little bit more. So you can use this mid course correction to get this trajectory to be whatever it is you want to be. I'm happy with how I'm approaching the moon as it is, so I'm just going to leave it, but I wanted to show you how to do that in case you are required to do that. Now, one thing to notice here, always keep an eye on the little uh, science experiment thing. Notice that I have some experiments that I can do. So let's get back to our ship, click on the little experiment button, because we are now in high space about Kerbin. So we've done ourselves a whole stack of experiments. We have also, I am pretty darn sure, satisfied that uh, going green. Yep, we have done the going green mission that we had here as well. Added in a whole pile of science. Uh, we can now close that. That's all we have to do. Again, for people used to KSP-1, you would probably be doing an EVA report at this point. But notice over here, it's not telling us to go outside, so there's no reason for us to go outside. Now, we have done a couple of missions, so let's pop back very quickly to mission control and see if there's something else here for us to get. So we're going to submit our going green. And we're going to submit our spacewalking. More science there, and we can see there, other than the moon, there's nothing else for us to get. Okay, well now we know. All that's left to do is get our moon orbit. So back to the tracking station. And back here to moon R1. Yep. Alright, and the other thing I like to do too is, when I'm about to do a bunch of time warping, which I'm about to do, I like to click on the positive or negative normal vector down here, because what that does is it orients the vessel so that the solar panels I have here on the side of the vessel are always going to be more or less perpendicular to the sun. It's a nice habit to get into, and then you don't have to worry about solar generation. So let's time warp out there by scrolling on out, picking a point that is just past 
this little icon here is telling us where we're encountering the moon and this little icon telling us where we're leaving the moon. So just past where we first encounter the moon, I'm going to click and I'm going to say time warp to this point. Come out of here and we should be seeing, there we go. We are now in the moon's SOI. And again, we're in a new situation. Our little science icon here is flashing away. So we're going to click that whole stack of new science we don't even need to look at it but you're free to go over it if you want to if you want you can transmit it um remember transmitting does cost electricity so be aware of that however if you plan on returning your kerbal there's no reason for you to transmit so i'm not going to bother but if you would prefer to transmit go on ahead all right so back here we need to now rectify our situation. Right now we're coming in towards the moon, we're whipping around, and then we're going to be exiting the moon. And we are, <laughs> if I didn't do anything, we're actually gonna go through a very lazy orbit and then re-encounter the moon here. That's why there's actually a second trajectory crossing. Uh, that's, that's kind of interesting how that's all worked out. You'll often find, by the way, as you whip around the moon that you might be ejecting yourself straight out of Kerbin's SOI and into orbit about the sun. So. Be aware of that. We need to rectify the situation. So we're going to right click on the moon. We're going to focus our energy there. We're going to put a maneuver plan right here on our closest approach, create a maneuver plan. And our problem is, is that we're just coming too fast for the moon's gravity to get a hold of us. We need to slow ourselves down. So for our maneuver plan, we're going to be burning in the retrograde direction, the opposite direction in which we're moving. That's what's going to reduce our speed. And you can see here our trajectory coming in. And although all I have to do is get this under, what does the contract say again? 2,400 kilometers. So I'm already well under that. So actually this would be good enough. It is easier to get yourself back to Kerbin from a circular orbit than from an elliptical orbit like this. So I'm going to do my best to make this as circular as I can. So I'm going to keep pulling retrograde. There we go. Now, as I get close here, I'll stop here. Notice how the moon's projected periapsis is moving away from the moon's current periapsis. That's actually telling me that I don't have the maneuver node exactly on the moon's periapsis. And if you wanna be, again, get this as close to a circle as you can, what you can do is make sure, again, that the circle part of the maneuver plan is highlighted, so it's that light blue. You can then grab it and you can move it around to get the two PEs right on top of each other. And that's telling you that you are actually exactly in the right place. Now I'm gonna keep putting a little bit more retrograde here. And this time I'm gonna go until Whoa, 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 they just flipped, so I went a little bit too far. And again, how picky you want to be with this is up to you. I tend to be pretty picky. So, there we go. When you see them starting to move like that, so they're, they're opposite, that's telling you you're pretty darn close to a circle. All right, so that's uh, pretty much it. Uh, again, I just want to make sure all of these are over 60. They are, so everything looks good. Let's get back to our ship. And we got this burn coming up in, uh, what do we got? A minute and 20, no, it's hour 25 minutes and counting. It's going to be a 17 second burn. If you've been playing with the throttle limiter, make sure your throttle limiter is at full. You actually should do that before you make the maneuver plan or else it, get, it messes up all of these numbers. But otherwise, we're ready to go. I'm going to hit a quick save. I'm going to warp to our burn. Just like that, we're going to uh, put it onto, I'm just looking for which one it is, the maneuver icon down here to lock it onto our burn vector. And then we're going to be ready to do our burn. We're going to time warp a little bit faster just to get to that a little quicker. And the music is jazzing up on us, getting us all excited for our burn. Okay. And again, once this get counts down, we're just going to push Z. Boom and boom. And we are off. Now, this is going to be a much quicker burn than our previous one. So just be ready. Now, this time, I'm not going to go to map view. Instead, what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be slowing down as I get close. 
and I'm going to be watching my AP over here. Let's slow down. And I'm really watching that apoapsis, and I want to get it close to being a circle. Very tiny burn here at the end. Looking at that apoapsis number at the bottom left. And there we go. We got this pretty darn close to a circle. Again, it's not necessary for the contract. Contract has been satisfied anyway. Um, but uh, I don't know. Makes me feel good when I do that. <laughs> and there we go. Back onto the normal vector for the sun rays. Um, there's no more science for us to collect because we're not close enough to the moon. If you want to get yourself closer at this point, you certainly can. I definitely have the Delta V to do that if I wanted to. It's only going to cost me about 280 meters per second to head back home. But we'll be getting closer to the moon soon enough. So we already have a lot of science. I don't need to. But what I do want to do is I want to pop back to mission control because we did satisfy a contract and see what else a little notification there so our moon moon or bust is been completed again we can go through all the color 150 science nice little animation and oh we do have a number of contracts here now this one here is one small step landing on the surface of the moon guess what our topic is going to be for the next video yep that's the next step in all that and that's going to be the next video the vessel we have actually with the dv left you might be you probably can it doesn't have any landing gear but you probably can put it down on the surface if you really wanted to isn't going to be getting off again though it doesn't have the dv for that uh, we do have a, some secondary ones here. First dibs is to plant a flag within a mare on the moon. A mare is one of those seas, the dark areas of the moon. Again, we're not going to be landing, so I'm not going to grab that. That's for next episode. I do have also this perfect circle one to establish an orbit about Kerman with an apoapsis and periapsis between 99 kilometers and 101 kilometers uh, nice, nice one to do, but we're not going to be establishing an orbit about Kerbin again on our way back. So these are all going to have to be for the next episode. But right now, well, we got to look at how do we get ourselves back? Got to still, we got there. We got to get back. So we're going to click the moon. We're going to find our moon R1 there. Hit control. And now we got to look at how do we get Home. So let's go again back into map view. Oh, my maneuver is still here. Let's get rid of that. So how do we get ourselves back home? So here's the moon, and we need to get ourselves back down to here. Imagine that this orbit wasn't around. Imagine that actually it's just our ship. Imagine the moon just wasn't in the picture, and we're in this orbit, and we need to get our trajectory down towards Kerbin so that we'll enter into Kerbin's atmosphere and then Kerbin's atmosphere will slow us down and get us down to the surface. How do we go about doing that? Well, we know that to lower our trajectory, we need to burn in a retrograde direction. So if this were just our orbit, we would put a maneuver plan here and just simply burn retrograde. That would lower down this trajectory. Now, of course, we're not in an orbit about Kerbin. We're in an orbit about the moon, and we're not going to bring the moon down to Kerbin with us. But the idea is actually still the same. The moon is moving around in a counterclockwise direction from left to right on your screen right here. So this is the prograde direction for the moon about Kerbin. This is the retrograde direction direction for the moon about Kerman, we need to eject ourselves out of the moon's SOI in the retrograde direction. So we need to leave the moon going this way towards the left on your screen. We do that by putting a maneuver node on the opposite side of the moon, create a maneuver plan, and raise our trajectory about the moon so that we create a trajectory that's going in the direction that we want. Now this is going to cost us about 280 meters per second. That number is available to you with that trip planner in the VAB. So I know how much about this is going to be, so I might as well put in something close to that. I always find it's actually a little less than that. Okay, so now we're, we're off here. Now, here's my trajectory about Kerbin. You can see that I am getting closer to Kerbin, but I can also tell without even looking at my closest approach to Kerbin that this isn't quite right. I need to eject myself in this direction along this trajectory. So I'm going to fix that by highlighting the maneuver and moving this. I don't even have to look at my encounter with Kerbin to know that this is now more efficient because I'm ejecting myself in the right direction. And in fact, if I look over here at Kerbin, well, I'm actually cracking into the surface here. That's what the little 
little warning symbols actually saying. Um, I don't know the game well enough to know whether I would survive this or not. You're going to be coming in pretty fast if you do it this way. So this is not a good idea. What you want to do is kind of back off a little bit. And what I find works well for me is if I right click on here and get my closest approach to Kerbin to be about 35 kilometers. I find that is a nice safe approach both for the moon and for coming back from Mimis 2. Um, it's low enough in the atmosphere for the atmosphere to slow you down but you're not coming in so fast that you're going to be this blazing comet that's going to explode and hit crash into the surface uh, detrimentally. So 34.7 something, that's perfectly fine. So there we go. We are all set to leave. So getting back to our ship, we have a 16 second burn coming up in about 35 minutes. It's 249 meters per second. I still have 629. So easy peasy. This is by the way, our last burn. Oops, I hit the wrong button. I want a time warp to there. And then I want to lock onto the maneuver node. <laughs> So this is going to be our final burn. The rest of our journey is going to have Sir Isaac Newton as our pilot. So uh, we will not need to be spending any more fuel as long as we perform this burn correctly. Let's see, do a little bit of time warping, get ourselves a little closer. All right, and then we'll go that. And again, three, two, one go and we are off and again what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut this a little bit early fortunately these numbers here are numbers about the moon not about Kerbin so I'm gonna to have to go into map view but I'm gonna cut a little bit early about there go back to map view we can actually get rid of the maneuver node if you want to at this point right click on there and then just go a little bit on the on the shift key just bring that down to about 35 kilometers Oh, see, I overcooked it a little bit. That's actually a good thing for me to show you. So I overcooked it a little bit. Let's fix that. So what we're going to do is we're going to turn down our throttle limiter um, to really get some fine tuning. We're going to flip around to the retrograde direction. Notice how the little ship was already telling us we were in the prograde direction. So we're flipping around the other way. Coming back to here again, right clicking on there. And now I got really fine control to be able to do that. Okay, putting it back on normal. We're done as far as burns go. Uh, the rest of this is just riding this home. So let's say goodbye to the moon. Goodbye moon, we've had it, had some fun, but we're all done with you. And at some point we will switch out of the moon's SOI, we just did, and into Kerbin's SOI. So we're now on our way falling towards Kerbin. I like to look down here at my time to periapsis. We're going to be encountering the periapsis in almost five hours, about four and three quarter hours. While I'm time warping, I like to keep an eye on that because um, although it doesn't look like we're falling that quickly, a uh, Kerbin's a big thing. It comes on us like a freight train. <laughs> and uh, so you can, and the time warp takes a bit to slow down. So you can find yourself suddenly in the atmosphere without too much warning. So keep an eye on this number as you're falling or do the time warp from map view if you prefer and be ready to kind of slow yourself down. So here we are, we're three hours away from periapsis, two hours away from periapsis. One hour, you can see Kerbin accelerating towards us. We'll start time warping a little more quickly now. There. So this gives you some nice control as you come in. If you just wait for the game to slow you down, sometimes I find by the time it slows you down, you're already in the atmosphere. There we go, coming in here, and we can watch our altitude here. Again, the atmosphere hit comes in at 70. So yeah, that's a probably a good time to go to just regular speed. I like to push the uh, service module here off towards the side. So I'm just going to stage right now. There we go. We're going to orient our capsule onto the retrograde vector. We're going to put this on surface so that this is now 
with the heat shield pointing into the airstream. Again, for those people that are used to KSP-1, I did not throw any science away with this. Some people might, where's your science experiment going away? Nope. The science automatically goes with the Kerbal. No matter where the Kerbal goes, the science goes with them. Even if you take the Kerbal and move them into a different vessel. If you move them into a vessel, by the way, with multiple Kerbals, all those Kerbals get a copy of the science, and the first of those Kerbals to get safely down to the surface cashes in all the science. So you don't have to think about it anymore. It uh, kind of does it all for you. No more leaving science behind. All right, we're going to get up to four times speed, which is as fast as we can go in this situation. A uh, little blue on here is telling us that our parachute is armed and ready to deploy once it's safe to do so. So basically, we just need to ride this down. All right, and there we are. A little bit of a bounce, but we're okay. Notice our science light is flashing and telling us to go outside. So we have a research opportunity. We'll grab that, that is great. And also we'll do an EVA and collect, oh yeah, the EVA doesn't work on the ladder. You have to let go, get down there on the surface. And now I can collect some science. So there we go, we're gonna scoop up a little bit of dirt here. I believe we're probably in the highlands, everything considering. Nice view though. I just wanna stay here for a little bit. There we go, what, what, what did we collect there? Surface samples from the grasslands. Okie dokie. Get that up. Back we go in and board. And now it's safe to simply recover our vessel. Back to the KSC we go. And there's no contracts for us to... Remember, we've finished up all our missions. But what I can do is go into research and development where I have 736 science to really start filling in the rest of, well, not the rest of this tech tree, the tech tree goes for quite a ways, but a good chunk of what I see in front of me, and that's gonna really help us with our moon landing. So that is going to be the next episode. I hope to see you then.